Hello, one welcome to Hudson Europa League final on Wednesday. Atalanta, Bayer, Leverkusen. After the whole year analyzing this competition with very good games, we have, of course, Dani Fisichella, Alvaro Romeo. Hello, ciao, guys, ciao. to give us the last tips Hello. in this big final in Dublin, in the Viva Stadium. Bayer, Leverkusen, uh, after winning the title, after... Um, reaching a historical season in Germany, no defeats in the Bundesliga, trying to grab the second title of the season. Atalanta, after grabbing the Champions League spot in Italy, trying to lift the first European trophy. Also, they lost the cup final. So, guys, stay with us. Tell me your tips. Who are you back in Atalanta or Leverkusen? And now, let's go on with the show. Well, the first thing we have to check in this game, in this great final, is the odds. And we are not surprised to see Leverkusen. Big favorites is 1.87 for them to win the game. 1.45 to lift the trophy. Danny knows a lot about Atalanta. Can they surprise Xavi Alonso's men? Danny Gasperini, one, another tactician, another great manager, by the way. It's it's fascinating, and uh, it's 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 a final that we are looking forward to see. Atalanta could have the chance to become the first Italian team ever to win the Europa League, and this time, unlike a week ago when they played against Juventus, they're not the favourites, and perhaps this is better for them. I think they relish more being the underdog against Juventus in the Coppa Italia final. Everyone thought they were going to win it because. Ultimately, they've been flying. They've been uh, really in good form in Serie A. They've secured the fifth spot. They might even finish third. And if you look at the recent game, especially the one they played against Roma a couple of weeks ago, they were really, really good. They could have scored eight goals. But then came the final against Juventus. Everyone tipped them to win. Conceded early uh, because of a Blauvich goal. And then they never got going. They got stuck into the net, into the web of uh, of the spider almost, in that case of Juventus, of the mean defense, and never got going. This time, it's different though. They play against a side that likes to carry the ball forward. They're more expansive. They attack with more men. And I think that suits Atalanta better. But of course, they play against a side of a higher quality. Can they hurt Bayer Leverkusen? Of course they can, because Bayer Leverkusen are amazing. They've been great. 51 games unbeaten, more than 140 goals scored, top scorers in the competition. They are not um, un unbreakable at the back. They only kept two clean sheets in the last eight. Roma and Karabag showed us they can score. They have scored against them. So did West Ham. I think for me more... Is this a question of who scores more, really? I know that sometimes uh, mm, uh, finals are cagey, but not this sort of finals, not this sort of games. Two teams that are very, very confident. I'm expecting a very difficult, different final from last season against uh, Roma, against Sevilla, which were two teams that were a bit of in turmoil after a difficult season, a lot of changes. Even Roma, perhaps, were not so sure about themselves. This is a little bit different for me. Um, I think this is going to be it's going to be fun to watch both teams to score for me it's my favorite one 186 Atalanta only three clean sheet in the last 11 but of course uh, Bayern Leverkusen are the favorites actually I guess we should uh, check the goals uh, market having Leverkusen a really fun team to watch also Atalanta over two 2.5 goals is 1.98, which is not bad. Uh, they both teams to score. Danny already said it. And we have uh, Atalanta comfortable as the underdog, uh, like Danny said before. For instance, we saw it in their famous tie against uh, Liverpool, beating them at Anfield. Alvaro, um, we saw Leverkusen suffering in the Europa League, probably even more. Than in Germany, they uh, got uh, late goals against Roma, against West Ham, and especially they suffered a lot to eliminate uh, Karabakh. Um, do you see them suffering? G would you open the door for a surprise? Yeah, it could be. It could be. Mm, I watched Barcelona getting six titles in one season, and if it wasn't for a goal 
from Iniesta in Stanford Bridge, late, uh, late goal. Barcelona would have never gotten that travel and that, uh, those six titles. Uh, same thing applies to Manchester City last year. They look like the strong favorites against uh, Inter in the final. They looked like that. And then Inter played so well and they had so many chances. And, you know, Manchester City won, won it only 1-0. But uh, I think Leverkusen is the favorite. And that, of course, the surprise factor exists. I believe that uh, Atalanta is a very good side. But Bayer Leverkusen is a better, better team, basically. And uh, I'm going to go for Leverkusen to win. Um, because one side, Atalanta has lost 13 games this season. The other one hasn't lost any. So for me, the headline is that. And uh, from there, uh, from that route, uh, derives... Uh, all the all the takes I'm gonna have now. So for example, Leverkusen to score over 1.5 goals is something that I really like for this game. It doubles up your bet basically, and they've been scoring so many goals this season that I can see that happening. Um, and of course, a, a small combination of something like that would be Leverkusen to win and over 1.5 goals in this game, not scored by Leverkusen in this case. That pays 2.3. Those are my three picks. Uh, this is the best European final of the year for me, better than Real Madrid Dortmund, better than Olympiacos against Fiorentina. Uh, both teams will be playing Champions League football the next season, which tells you about their own level. Uh, and both sides have played a lot of football too, uh, both reaching uh, two finals as well. Atalanta has been a giant killer and Leverkusen is the football story of the year. Um, but one of them is clearly favorite, which is Leverkusen. I mean, them to lift the trophy pays 144, and uh, Atalanta to lift it pays uh, 2.8. But yeah, uh, these are teams that mirror each other in a way with a 3-4-3, three, three three, but there are differences, of course. For example, uh, Leverkusen is an expert in finding the free man on the wings with free Pong and Grimaldo, who detach from the compact unit of midfield very quickly, and suddenly in a blink of an eye, they are in the box, and you don't even know how. Uh, also, Leverkusen does many passing triangles, but the passing triangles don't have as a target just to keep the ball. The target of that passing triangle is to push the last pass for, forward as well. So I think that uh, Leverkusen is the favorite because they are a better side than Atalanta, but due respect, all due respect to Atalanta, obviously, because they have been uh, giant killers. They defeated the Sporting Club Portugal, Liverpool, yeah. Marseille. I love what they did. But, you know, I have to take Leverkusen because simply they have, been one, they have been one of the best sides in Europe. And at the end of the day, I cannot forget that they are still unbeaten. And, you know, even this weekend, they managed to, to get a win with a lovely goal, by the way, from uh, Robert Andrich. I don't know if you, you have seen his back heel. No, I haven't. But he, he scored a goal, lovely one. Oh, wow. Well, he's well, getting used to it now, to score goals. Danny, everyone is talking about Xavi Alonso. Obviously, is the story of the season, as uh, Alvaro is telling us. But also, I think we have to highlight uh, Gasperini. Um, a lot of years uh, training in Italy. And uh, now, as a mature man, uh, he is um, <clears throat> reaching... A lot of goals uh, and uh, lifting this Atalanta to a place I think that uh, not even the most optimistic supporter could have dreamt. Uh, it was a team fighting to avoid relegation. They are now used to playing uh, finals and is a manager able to change completely the team from one year to the other or getting some players like the Catalera that he was mocked uh, last season and he's working now properly for Atalanta. So I think uh, hats off also for uh, Gasperini. Credit to Gasperini for, as you said rightly, Edu, always changing, but always remaining the same. He's amazing at what he's doing because he never changes football philosophy. He likes to play propositive, progressive football, he likes to push his wingbacks forward. is a meaningful possession of the ball in the opposition half. He's not just having the ball for the sake of it. He's very comfortable with his back three. But then he changes the interpreters a lot. And this Atalanta side has evolved so much during the years. You know, we went from the team with El Papu Gomez and Illich with a lot of fantasy up front up to Zapata, the big man, target man. Last season, they didn't quite have the same strength with Zapata and Muriel, and in came two very different players this summer, De Catelere and Gianluca Scamacca. De Catelere last season in Serie A 
had zero goals. Scamacca last season in the Premier League had three goals. Okay, he had a knee injury, but really, his, his, his overall contribution to West Ham was eight goals, was on the bench when West Ham won the Conference League against uh, Fiorentina. And this summer, Milan were very happy to loan the Cateler to Atalanta. It is the, the proof that in the right system, in the right environment, perhaps without the pressure of the big club in Milan, he flourished. And it's curious the fact that at the beginning, they did both struggle a little bit to settle uh, the Catelere and Scamacca Andres Gasperini. He demands a certain type of movement, a certain type of press, but now they flourished a lot and they have scoring goals. Atalanta is going to finish probably in the top four. It is a big, big story uh, this one. Yeah, credit to Gasperini of course, who's never been given, I think, enough chances at a top club or only one when he used to manage Inter and his ideas didn't cut through and then he's found his dimension in uh, Atalanta let's see how it goes I was disappointed with them losing the final I must say I thought they were going to give it more of a go but I think this uh, scenario it's uh, much more suitable uh, for them uh, we'll see but I mean if, if we'll have to go into a pick I mean I know I said both teams to score earlier sure. but you know it's still a final okay there could be there could be some caution there could be some cagey moments under 275 goals pays 173 if you think about about the history of the final sometimes the no high risk on game if there are only three goals you only lose half a stake and if we want to check the goals market or the individual markets mm. um, which players should we look at uh, Alvaro we have mm. for instance uh, Victor Boniface of Patrick uh, Schick with the mm. lowest odds as a goal scorer but everyone is looking at Florian Wirtz or maybe no. even Gianluca Escamaca. These two players paid much more than the ones I mentioned, Bonifacio or Schick, or for instance, uh, the Fulton man of play or Grimaldo, 4.5, yeah, each of them. To well, uh, look, it's very simple for me. Um, Bayer Leverkusen has had 12 different scorers in the Europa League, which is a ridiculously high number considering they have played 14 games. Think about it for a second. In some leagues, after across 38 games, some teams don't even have nine different scorers. Bayer Leverkusen has had 12 different scorers in the Europa League. So for me, the individual market is a no-go for Bayer Leverkusen. I am totally aware of the quality of some of their players, but the goals are coming from any source, really. Whereas for Atalanta, it's a very different story. Uh, I really like Escamaca to score, for example, uh, in any game, really in any game, but they are playing against Bayer Leverkusen as well. I am very wary of that factor. So the individual market in this game is not for me. It's not for me, really. And uh, I'm going to say uh, something just very quickly. Um, I differ with Daniel in something here. Uh, he says that on under 2.75 goals can be a good one. Uh, in my case, I'm going to tend to back the goals, as I said before, Leverkusen to score, for example, over 1.5 goals, 2.0 is something that I really like. Uh, I tend to think over rather than under in this game, mm. uh, given the approach of both sides. If you look at the goals market, one quickly, probably it's more profitable to go into the shot market. Leverkusen have had 20, 34 goal attempts in the competition. Top number, mm. of course. It includes also the, 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 the group stages. But if you look at Florian Verse to have over 1.5 shots, Scamacca Z over 0 0.5 shots, the Catelare over 0 0.5 shots, even two, the two wing backs on of target. Leverkusen. Of overall, overall, overall. You have to, okay. but you have That's to good. put it together. Also, Grimaldo, Frimpong, over 0 0.5 shots. Mm. They're gonna have shots, not necessarily shots on goal, not necessarily goals. I mm -hmm. think, I think this is a good one. There's gonna be, I think, I agree with you. Yeah. There's gonna be shots in 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 the, in, in, the, in this game, and you have, you have to build it somehow to to make it. Something Daniel, like for example, over six shots in the first half, yeah, or in the second half could be. I think that's a good bet, but obviously, you have to find a, a good value for that. Well, uh, winning uh, with a comeback is an interesting one for Leverkusen. <laughs> for instance, it's nine. Mm. I'm checking this in B365 uh, right now. So it could be a good option for Alvaro. Is the best European final this uh, season. We've talked uh, a lot about uh, Leverkusen, um, even if they suffer eh, in the Europa League this season, Atalanta killing uh, huge teams in the competition. They are the underdog for this one. Anything else, guys, you want to say about this final? 
Well, uh, Daniel has said that maybe, but this is the first ever European final for the great uh, Gian Piero Gasperini. Sí, 66, years old, 66 years old, but uh, one of the most influential Italian managers. And it's great that uh, some of the best Italian influences and coaches of late have come from modest or humble yeah. football clubs like Sassuolo or Atalanta, not from Inter, not from Juve, not from Milan. They've been proved in small clubs. It's yeah. really impressive. You are thinking about the Cherby, no? For instance, now that... For instance, Cervi, of yeah. Course. Well, Italiano, Italiano. Italiano. Fiorentina. Italiano. Italiano in the final also with uh, Fiorentina. Um, well, guys, uh, thank you for this analysis. Uh, remember to let me know in the comments who are you backing uh, first ever European title for Xavi Alonso as a manager, first ever European title for Gasperini as a manager is a huge uh, age uh, gap, but still both have done a brilliant season. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Alvaro. Good luck to Ciao. Atlanta, to Leverkusen. Bye-bye.